Hello and welcome back to another Torch review. I have the R20 Javelot in from Olight. This was sent in via the company. Not a new model, but I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at this. It's still for sale, this particular one. And you can see at the bottom, this one has a bit of range, 314 meters. So we're expecting uh, an interesting beam pattern off this. Just some information on the back. And on the side, we just have the usual details. We have some uh, information on the candela rating. You'll see quite a high rating for that. And we have three power levels. Probably be easier to see that on the user manual, which we will look at shortly. And looking at the torch, quite a compact size, around about 13 centimeters in length. And a lot of knurling on the body gives this torch quite a nice grip. You'll notice that we have a collar for the micro USB port rather than the typical silicone flap. And that's quite an interesting design. I've seen that on a couple of torches and I quite like it. You can also see on the head, you should be able to see some very fine machining. And that's also on the base or tail cap as well. So it's not completely smooth there. There's a bit of grip on it too. And the LED is the XPL High version with a smooth reflector. But remember, the shape of the reflector does make quite a difference to the actual beam pattern. At the bottom you'll see some holes where you can put the strap through and we have quite a large silicone button on the base too. Just unscrewing this, we'll take the battery out. Now this is a custom battery again from Olight. You'll see the two contact points at the top, the positive and negative. So you'll need that custom battery to charge in the torch. You can see at the top of the torch we have two springs inside and that's how it's charging it through there. But you can also use other batteries as well, you just won't be able to charge them. I do like the button, it is quite a nice tactile feel on it, lots of grip with it, nice texture and a good feel. And the operation on this is very simple, just a single press for on and off and you half press to cycle through the three power modes. There is no strobe mode included on this torch. So it's a very simple torch, and that may be a good or a bad thing depending on how you feel, but it always defaults back to the highest power level, and I don't particularly like that part of it. This is the included hand strap, very similar to the other ones that I've looked at from Olight, it's identical. And you can also slide it through there if you wish. The USB cable that's provided, micro USB tip, is quite a strong feeling cable, nice and robust, and about a meter in length. We'll just quickly look over the user manual just to see what we have. Very straightforward on this particular guide. It's a bit shorter than most of the Olights because the operation is so simple. And here's your three power levels, 900, 100, and 10. So you have a step down after about three minutes to 450 lumens. There's that candela rating, which is 24,700. That just tells you the brightest intensity of the beam. Quite stable because of the uh, design on the tail cap and it resists rolling too. A quick comparison, comparing it to the Lumintop EDC25, which is uh, a standard sort of everyday carry type torch. And you'll see that the Olight is a bit shorter. A couple of differences, there's no clip with the Olight. There's no provision for one either. Do like the collar though for the micro USB that will do a nice job of protecting it so you don't have to worry about damaging the flap or accidentally ripping it off and make sure you've got it screwed up and it's absolutely perfectly fine submersed underwater as with all the other torches I've tested. I leave them in here for half an hour anyway just to make sure and when you get a low battery warning the LED comes up on the torch glows red just to tell you it's time to charge it and I've got very good charging speeds with this. Uh, around about one amp some of them are a bit lower than that so it did a decent job as far as the charging goes and once it's finished it just turns off the charge and the led lights green this is a quick example of the glow ring that's around the tip quite a few of the o lights have this handy if you drop it by accident you've just turned it off and the beam pattern as you can see you have a hot spot in the middle but quite a nice spread on the outside now beam shots outside, range of about 100 foot, 90 to 100 foot, you can see lots of power. You'd be pushed to tell the difference between this and the 1000 lumen one. And I've moved down to the medium level. Still a decent amount of output. And you can go right down to the 10. And if you have fairly good vision, you'll be able to see quite well with that lowest output level. Would have preferred an extra power level in there, but that's basically what we get with this torch. And with the Lumintop, we'll have to go up through the ratings, the power levels. 
because that's how it operates. Be able to see the difference in the beam pattern. Lumen top would be a more balanced beam, so you'd have a bit of range and a bit more spread. But I find that the Olight does quite a nice job with the spill. You do get that sort of circular image that you tend to get with the um, tactical torches as well, but it does fill in quite nicely. It's not just all in the middle, uh, dropping it down to the medium setting. And then onto the lowest. I would have preferred if they'd have perhaps added an extra level so you had an even lower lowest mode, but we'll have a look at that shortly in a minute. And up close, you can see the beam pattern there with the hot spot in the middle section. So despite the fact that it does have that hotspot, it's actually pretty good for mixed use. You can see here, you get a fairly decent spread with it too. And that's kind of important, I think, for a general purpose torch. If the beam pattern is a bit too narrow, then you'll find it would be of a limited use. And the 10 lumen mode is perfectly fine for up close. You can see here, I'm in the lowest power level. It's not overly um, intense, so it's not uncomfortable to use, but I would have liked perhaps an extra mode in there just to give you maybe sort of two or three lumens, or perhaps even slightly lower. Now because this has a bit of range to it, the beam pattern, you see I'm lighting up the tree there in the distance and the grass, no problems at all. And this house is quite a way away, good 150, 180 foot, and no problems at all lighting that up. Opens out quite nicely the beam pattern at further ranges. This is a standard telephoto test that I do. And really, I can't tell any difference visually in terms of the power output between the 1000, 1100 lumen torches that I've looked at. And again, onto the tree test. These are all the same tests that I do, so you can go over the other torches and see how the beam pattern compares. Just a quick look at the roof. You can see the uh, beam pattern has spread out quite nicely as well below, so it's not just all thrown into the middle. And you've no problems at all lighting that up and down the side of the house. we we'll start off at the highest, drop it down to medium, and then we're going to the lowest mode. I'd say the medium would probably be the level that I'd be using the most with the torch. I've been using it now for a while. Uh, that would be a level that I'd find plenty of illumination um, and you'll be get good run times with that. It's time to talk about a uh, conclusion with the R20 Javelot. And there are actually quite a few areas that I would change on the torch. Uh, on the other hand, there are a couple of areas that I like a lot. So I'll start with the areas which I think are weak points. The major one for me is that it always turns on, goes straight to the highest power level. And I don't really like that in torches, being honest. I'd prefer to have a mode memory so it just goes into the last setting. Also, another power level would be quite handy. And you have to use the custom battery for in torch charging. And I don't really think that that's necessary. Although you get the battery included and it's a good quality cell, you can, of course, use other ones but that's something that I would change myself. On the upside, quite a nice compact size, good charging speeds, and I actually like the beam pattern on this one. It's a good mix. You do get quite a nice range off of it, but a nice spill too. And the micro USB sleeve and cover is also a good design, although it does mean that you can't have a clip attached to it as well. So there, despite the fact there are some weaker points that I would address in a future model if there is one, what I do like the most about the torch is it's one of the nicest torches that I've used to hold. It's a very comfortable torch and there's a lot of grip on the torch and it just feels very nicely balanced. And that does count for a lot for me personally, but it is quite a simple torch. It doesn't have a strobe mode either, so you'll have to weigh up the pros and cons with this one to see whether or not it might appeal. But if you wanted a torch, there was no nonsense, no fussing around, this one could certainly be worth looking at. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was of use to you. And if you have any questions, do leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll be looking at some more torches in future videos.